Okay, um, hello. I am going to be doing a talk on tendons and also tendon healing because as I've been looking around in textbooks and even on the internet for videos and such, there's very little out there to even just explain the general uh, anatomy of a tendon. And obviously tendons are one of the primary things that get damaged. So I thought we would do a little video and um, and I will put this up and people can let me know what they think. So let's get started. So a tendon is um, a type of connective tissue. Okay, so it's a connective tissue. And what kind of connective tissue is it? Well, it's a dense, regular connective tissue. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the fibers run in quite a parallel and uniformed order okay so they all run in roughly the same direction as opposed to irregular which are sort of all over the place which you would find sort of underneath the dermis and such so this is very important because if you think about it the strains that are getting placed on the tendon are very unidirectional i.e they get pulled in really one sort of direction so they want to be able to resist force well in that direction and that is why all the collagen fibers are arranged in such a way. So I've drawn a, a breakdown of a tendon here, and as you can see, it's made up of several compartments. So say this is the body of the tendon. This is what you would see if you were to, um, you know, look at a cadaver or, or even the tendons that you can see under your skin sometimes. But they're made up of other little bits, and they're made up of these, these bits here which when you pull them out, uh, look like this. And these are called fascicles, okay? Now, in between the fascicles and in between the further bits within the fascicles, and I've drawn them here as little green, green bits, but they're also found in here, is called the endotendon. And the green bits are the cells, which I'll come back to, okay, but I just want to let you know that these cells are also found in the endotendon here, right? Now, the next bit that comes out the fascicle out of these bits, which when you pull it out looks like this, are called fibril. So very similar to the breakdown of muscle, um, actually. And then the next bit that comes out here is what we call the subfibril. And then really we're getting to very small compartments here when we call these the, the micro fibrils. And then the individual little bits that um, jot out there are really just the collagens, uh, is the collagen fibrils, which of course are made up of three different types of tropal collagens. Now, the important thing that we need to know here is the type of collagen, and this is very important. The collagen that is here is type one collagen. So this is the same collagen that you would find in your bones and in um, a lot of your dermis. And it's a very strong type of collagen. It's able to resist a lot of tensile force. And it's um, it comes into play a lot when we talk about healing because it's not, a rid it's not first laid down, but we'll, we'll get to that. Now, I mentioned these cells. So, oops. So what are these cells? Well, these cells are called tenocytes. I'll, I'll put them in green so that we know. These are called tenocytes. So what are tenocytes? Well, essentially they are fibroblasts. Now, if you were to look in certain books or certain things, they will be referred to as fibroblasts. And that is correct, they are, they are the same thing. I just like calling them tenocytes because they're fibroblasts found in the tendon, therefore, it helps me know where we're talking about these fibroblasts. So, um, yes, they're called tenocytes, and they derive from tenoblasts. That's where they derive from. That is their precursor cell. Okay, so we've got a general overview of what the tendon is, but we've not really described what it does, have we? And I think that's an important thing to uh, to describe. So what, what does it do? What does it do? Oh, dear. What does it do? Well, it connects bone to muscle, or muscle to bone, as I should really be saying. 
But anyway, it connects muscle to bone and bone to muscle. And therefore, it's used for movement. Movement. That's a big one. Now, in the movement as well, it's also used for support. Because if you think about it, your tendons help support you. And they help support a lot of joints as well. A lot of joints are supported by them, especially um, over the foot, over the ankle and, and the knee joint and such like that. We've got a lot of tendons running over uh, and the hip joint as well, actually. Um, so they help support joints. And also what they can do is they can store kinetic energy. So they can actually help with propulsion in the movement, which sort of links back here. But what I mean by that is because of their uh, fibroelastic properties, the way that the proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans are arranged in the tendons, when you pull them, when you stretch them, they're like a rubber band. They want to pull back immediately. And this pull them back can actually be used as propulsion. And uh, this is very true of the Achilles uh, tendon, which when you're walking along, um, certainly it becomes very useful for energy, um, energy requirements, because you just are sort of propulsed forward by it. Okay, so let's go down a little bit. And here's a little sort of drawing that I've drawn just before. Now, to orientate ourselves, this is the bone. And more precisely, this is compact bone, compact bone, um, or cortical bone, depending where we want to call it. And inside is the trabecular bone, or soft cancellous bone. And here is our tendon. And here is our muscle. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about this bit, because... The, the muscle all of a sudden becomes the tendon. So what is this called? Well, this is called the myotendinous, oh, my spelling is terrible, I'm sorry, tendinous junction. So what is going on here? Well, muscles, as you may know, are made up of sacromeres, okay, which have got uh, thick and thin filaments running through them. And then the thin filaments, spread out onto the other side and they go past what's called a z-line which makes up the sacromere and they actually go past and through this and then they start to what's called interdigitate interdigitate with the fibers from the tendon so the collagen one fibers and they literally interdigitate with like that and i'm going to write interdigitate because i can't actually pronounce it very well inter how are we going to spell that? Interdigitating. Interdigitating. And so the reason it's called that is because it's kind of like fingers interdigitating with each other. And this is actually um, probably the weakest part of the tendon and muscle. And it's most common to injury. Most common for injury and, and interestingly enough actually is that if you're looking at um to to strengthen this part so when you're strengthening your muscles you have to release particular growth hormones and cytokines which will stimulate the muscle to grow and at the same time you need to do the same for the tendon and then this uh, myotendinous junction will just sort of link in with all that and interestingly enough, people who are on anabolic steroids don't release all the right hormones which strengthen this junction, and they're most likely to injure here because this bit isn't as strong as what it should be proportionally to the muscle. Um, and it's just a bit of a telltale sign sometimes. It's one of the main things you would see someone come in with massive big muscles, ripping their uh, tendon, myotendinous junctions everywhere. And it makes you wonder. So that's a myotendinous junction. And what about where it joins into the bone? Well, remember in the bone, you've got all your type 1 collagen fibers running down this way, okay? And you've got your type 1 collagen, let's do it in another color, got your type 1 collagen running this way. Well, this is exactly what happens. They also break into each other. The collagen fibers move in and pair up. And this is called Sharpie's fibers that you would see. And what is actually happening is if you 
remember from the bone is that oh I'm opening everything up. If you remember from the bone, you've got your periosteum sitting over here. And so you have periosteal um fibroblasts sitting here. Now fibro periosteal fibroblasts actually are precursors um to both chondriocytes and blastocytes uh, and tendocytes, sorry. And so it's not too uncommon in and around here to find little deposits of calcium, uh, of cartilage, sorry, where some of the periosteal fibroblasts have differentiated into chondrial blasts and um, made little bits of cartilage. That's not terribly unusual. Now this whole area here where it joins into the bone with the Sharpie fibers, um, it's got two main names which are interchangeable. And the first one is the osteotendinous junction or the enthesis where the tendon joins the bone. And usually when you see the enthesis, it's also referring to a little bit of a bump that occurs on the bone due to the pull of the tendon and the strains that's been placed upon it. Now, what we haven't mentioned is that the different types of tendon that you get, okay? And there is two main types, and they're gonna interplay a lot when we start talking about injury. And the thing that separates them is really their blood supply and the type of sheath that they have over them. So the first one type that you get is sheath tendon, tendons. And these are predominantly found on your flexors of the wrist. Now these unfortunately have a very poor blood supply and this means that when they're injured it's quite a big thing and they need they usually always need to be operated on if they're if they're severely injured. They contain uh, mesothelial cells that line line the sheath and the sheath actually sort of covers over in a bit of a backwards way and lined with methothelial cells which produce a nice um, fluid, a nice serious fluid for gliding. But the blood supply, is, uh, blood supply is not very good and therefore if injury occurs as I said it's, it's quite bad. The second type is what we call the paratendon. The paratendon. And this is another covering over the sheath uh, over, sorry, over the over the tendon body, and it's not as lubricated as the sheath tendon, and it's really just to help separate other tendons from other tendons and to allow some gliding to take place. But what it does have is it does have a decent blood supply running through it, and when I say a decent blood supply, I mean relative to tendons. All tendons have a reasonably poor blood supply, but relatively speaking, the blood supply is quite good. And therefore, when these tendons are damaged, um, it, is, it is not as bad as before. Now, within the tendons, there's another thing that we need to mention. And that is receptors. And these receptors are predominantly found near the myotendinous junction. And these tendons are called Golgi, sorry, Golgi tendon organs and I don't believe they've got anything to do with the Golgi apparatus or anyone who um, or any of the guy who invented them anyway so in there what are these well these are a stretch receptor so to speak and they're very important for something called proprioception proprioception Appropriate perception that is your awareness of where your limb is in space so it will send information back to the central nervous system say look there's this much stretch going on here this is dangerous pull back or normally in appropriate perception it will give enough stretch to say look this is this is how stretched we are so I think this is where the limb roughly is uh, very important for your gait and such like that so that's an overview of tendons a very simplified basic overview um, 
what perhaps one last thing I could mention is, in fact, that I will mention that is very important, is how the tendons are made up. Okay, so their cellular component consists of about 20%, makes up about 20%, and that is predominantly tenocytes. There is a couple of resident macrophages and um, other uh, inflammatory cells that are there, but it is predominantly tenocytes or fibroblasts. The rest of it is extracellular matrix, so that makes up 80%. And of the 80%, okay, 70% is water. 70% is water. And of the 30% that is left, it gets further broken up. And of the 30%, we would say that about 95% is type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen. And of the other 5%, this is made up of mainly glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans. Oops, sorry, I'm spelling that wrong. Proteo, we're still spelling it wrong. Never mind. Proteoglycans. Um, notable ones to mention would be agrican, which, if you remember, is hyaluronic acid and chondrin sulfate and such like that attached onto them. And also another one is decro decorin. Now, these are very negatively charged molecules and so help to draw in this water and keep it all nicely hydrated. And also add a lot to the elast uh, uh, fibroelastic properties of the tendon, giving it that sort of a bit of squishiness to the sides and stuff like that, but also help really to maintain its shape. So the next video I'll do will be when the tendon gets damaged and how it heals because that really is where there's a severe lack in, um, in information about that. So I hope you enjoyed this and yeah, thank you very much.